and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Ayara's Citadel over in the competitive metagame challenge. That's what we're doing here. All right, I guess it's called the standard metagame challenge. Um, but that's what we're doing. What this is, is this is an event where we can play and if we lose one time, we're out. Uh, but we can win up to seven matches. If you checked out the Teamer Walkers video earlier, I hope you checked that out over on YouTube. Um, we won seven matches there, and you can get um, a lot of prizes. And if you win seven matches, you win 30 booster packs, which we did earlier, and we cracked them open. Uh, again, you all you'll should check out that video. But this is, uh, we got some like kind of bonus magic here. Uh, because we played the seven matches there, six matches for our next league, um, we've we played 18 matches today. We we are at the time where we would normally stop. It's 10 o'clock at night. Usually I stream from 3 to 10. So we have a complete bonus leaks, but that's the good news. Bad news, um, we're just we're going with one run here in the metagame challenge. So if we lose, we're done. So hopefully we don't lose our first match, but if we lose our first match, we're done, and that's it for the video. But we're going to play until we win. All right, our deck, we got um, an aggressive value deck here where we're trying to play all sorts of creatures. Um, we have the main part of the deck is a Yara. Whenever a, a black creature enters the battlefield under our control, our opponent loses a life, we gain a life, and that's how we're going to be winning the game. We're going to be draining our opponent out. Of course, we can we can do some stuff in combat, obviously, but uh, that's going to be the main way, draining them out with a Yara triggers, draining them with the Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven combo. And also draining them with Bolus of Citadel's third part, the sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. <clears throat> so yeah, our, our other part of our combo, of course, we, we want to try to get Bolus of Citadel in play, and then we just start casting all of the stuff off the top of our library. Of course, you have to pay life equal to its CMC, but if we have an Ayara in play, we gain a life each time a black creature enters. So Priest of Forgotten Gods would cost two life to play, but then we gain a life back. These things cost one life, but we gain a life back, and technically with Familiar, we'll gain extra life. Lazatep Reaver is like two creatures, so you just it's just nets, uh, you know, it's zero life. And so we can play a lot of stuff for a very little amount of life uh, when we have a Yara and Citadel in play. Uh, we have four Fable Passage in the deck. They can, they can uh, reset the top of the library if we have Citadel in play, but they also fetch out lands from our deck because once we, you know, once we do play Citadel, we don't want to be hitting lands. We want to keep on hitting more spells. So the Fable Passages um, allow us to play, to play 20 lands, but they can also help thin the deck as well. And if Murder Riders die, they go down to the bottom of the library. We can shuffle the Murder Riders back with the Fable Passage as well. Um, so yeah, so that's what our deck's all about. Let's give it a try. So here we go. Let's pick up some W's. See how we do. <laughs> Hopefully not O1. Hopefully not O1. <clears throat> what made you choose going mono black instead of Orzhov or Rakdos? Basically how easy it is to cast a Yara. Um, and I think there's just enough good cards in in just mono black that we don't need the splash. We're at, yeah, we're 16 and 2 on the day. That is pretty good. Got two donation decks in there as well. It's pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, today has been a very good day of magic. So that's why we got this bonus league in here also. <clears throat> so the cottage, you know, it has to be the fourth land for it to come into play untapped. All right, we drew, we drew the cat. So we're gonna play the cat. Next turn, we'll play the oven. We'll put the, if we don't have a land, if we draw a land, then we know we can wait on the cottage. And then I can go straight straight to Enforcer. Rankle does fit the deck, but just not well enough, basically. There's nothing wrong with Rankle. Maybe it's actually better to play the Oven instead of Enforcer. No, I'm gonna play Enforcer. Uh, 
Yep, 15 life to go. Enforcer with the death touch. It's just easier to double spell with the oven. You know, like we can go Ayara and then go Reaper oven the next turn. <clears throat> the do yeah, these the donation decks were not the metagame challenge. They were the the regular donation decks I play in the traditional constructed league where you play until you win five or lose two. The MCs, these are the metagame challenge decks. That's what the MC stands for metagame challenge. My opponent only has two cards. That's not very many cards. I guess they were... What kind of mulligan were they on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have eight cards right now. This is... They just had their turn three. So they drew two. So they should have had nine. So they just mulliganed one time. So they just mulligan to six. I have two extra cards than they do. Because I did not mulligan for one card. And then I was also on the draw. So I drew another card before then. Um, I don't, the, is te the question is, is Team or Walker a tier deck? I don't, I don't really know how, like, how, what the definition of a, a tier deck is, but, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's just a deck that I made and put together, but it's, it's very good. Is Nissa a problem? I don't really see Nissa as being much of a problem. down to 11. Yeah, Krasis will definitely be a problem. <laughs> I mean, Krasis always is. And this is not too much. Looks like Krasis. Definitely looks like Krasis. The, the decks with the M and C next to them were metagame challenge decks. Boo. All right, back up to 15. Real problem is that thing kills me pretty fast. But not, not that fast. Looking for <clears throat> a murderous rider to kill the Krasis. Or a Citadel. Hmm. 
I could draw, you know, more, I could draw more, like, you know, main phase here. And do that. I want to see if we find Murderous Rider. Yeah, that's a lot of lands. Where's my fetch lands? Need it then. All right, so they're at 10 currently. Put them down from 15 to 10. A Yara drains two. Yeah, I can play this to get double drain just for a turn, but then of course we have to sacrifice it. Can't have multiple legends. Hey, Mezra. Yeah, it's going really well. I have another one? We want to draw Citadel. Rise, my elemental friend. It's a good chance we can kill them if we draw Citadel. Excellent timing. I don't know. Pretty average timing. Revel with your king, wild and sovereign and free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a bunch of mythics in your deck. Whoop de do. Um, I think I'm going to sack the Midnight Reaper, honestly, here. No. No, it's the cap. Sacking Mid Midnight Reaper would keep them from drawing a card. And it would also keep me from taking as much damage from other... From other stuff, but... All right. We're playing three citadels. Where are they at? Let's try this. My opponent didn't crack the. They didn't eat the food. I mean, they're they're kind of dead. Oh yeah, it's it's very lethal. I mean, it's lethal without the attack. I don't even need to attack. But attacking just makes it more lethal. I was gonna be able to drain another two, four. Okay, let's see. 
Legion's end good against Krasis. Murder Strider good against all sorts of busted Planeswalkers. All right, we're going to get Murderous Rider in here. Basically, Priests of Forgotten Gods can be either really bad or really good. It can be, you know, like game winning kind of card or not really do anything. So if we trim a couple priests, trim a gutter bones, trim a reaver, and get the grasps in there, we'll do that. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Is that's that's exactly that's exactly it, Zedalam. Is I, I don't want to water down the game plan too much. That's why I'm a little hesitant there. Ugh. Not the best hand. Two lands, double citadel, a few one drops. Uh, no, I think the Teamer Walker's deck is probably better. Gutter Bones hits harder than Orzhov Enforcer, so even though it doesn't use my mana as well, it's just it's an extra point of power on the battlefield. This is the competitive metagame challenge, or the standard metagame challenge, where whenever you lose once, you're out, and you can win up to seven matches. And if you win seven matches, you get 30 packs. And we're just doing it once. So if we lose once, we're out. So hopefully we don't lose. I like my opponent not doing anything on turn one, turn two, turn three, or turn four. I like that. Yeah, Oko, what makes Oko so good? The high loyalty and the, the plus one ability, turning everything into three threes, and turning your opponent's really good creatures into three threes, turning your extra food tokens into three threes. It makes kind of like your food tokens be able to kill like all their creatures and it has a really high loyalty. to back it up so it makes need to do one damage perfect it kind of it negates the effectiveness of all of your opponent's creatures which is Ridiculously powerful for three mana. And it is it is certainly a built in win con. You 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 generate a three three creature every other turn with it. So like three three creatures kill people pretty quickly. Yeah, you, know, you make a food, then you turn into a three three, then you make a food, then you turn into a three three. Alright, we're one to know. We're still going.
Boo. You can certainly have Cry of the Carnarium, but I don't think we should play scared. You know, Ritual of Soot would just... Um, would still leave us a 1-1. All right, we're going to take, you know, fetch here, take a land out of the deck. This is what these Fabled Passages are for. Make it just a, a smaller percent chance to draw a land, but it's there. It's a, it's a very small amount, but it's an amount. Against many foes like you. Sure do. Exclamation oh, point playlist. No That's my playlist right there. So, you know, like, <clears throat> they're at 10, this is 5 power, this puts them down to where we have lethal this next turn, so if their plan was just to cast Drawn from Dreams, they can't quite do that. Keep an open mind. Yeah, the other reason, the other reason why we're playing that, that card, besides just that little bit of thinning, um, which, you know, each, each one of those makes it uh, approximately like a like a 2% less chance that you're drawing. Um, that you're drawing said land. But, um, put that back in our hand. But because of Bolas' Citadel, uh, getting rid of those lands with Bolas of Citadel, and also having a card that can reset the top of your library with Citadel. That's what really makes it valuable. So we got to find ways to deal these last two points of damage. Assuming they cast Ritual of Soot here, we'll get a 1-1 one, one with the Afterlife token, so that'll be one point of damage. And then we have, we have a whole lot of stuff in our deck that can do one point of damage. Yeah, Cat, a Yara. Adurio, that four months. Thank you so much. That's sub number 22. Okay, so I I thought I was one behind. That like at the end of the Simic video, I didn't update this. So all right, so 22. A little closer to our sub goal there. Just a thought erasure, or sorry, so a Legion's End. Legion's End doesn't exile both of our creatures in play. If y'all, if you're one of the, man, we have 13, 13 viewers in here. If if y'all are enjoying the stream and like to help support me as somebody who's just a full-time streamer, so I do every day, 
consider subscribing to the channel. You get access to all those really cool emotes. There's, I think, 22 of them. And you can put out your hype votes like everybody else whenever we get the new subs and everything. I'd really appreciate that. What we do with our sub goals um, is every time we hit tw uh, 20 total sub goals, I do a 12-hour stream. And so far, we are, we're almost there. Uh, we're at 18 sub goals right now. All right, sorry, it's being a little slow. I opened my Twitch page to update my sub goals, and I guess I didn't like the video. But yeah, so we're at our last sub goal that we just hit earlier puts us to 18, 18 out of 20. I I used to play um, Paper Magic competitively, but I don't anymore. I stream full time. Um. All right, here we go. Thanks, Mazura. Yep, there's the link there. It does, Cracker. Yep. Um, yeah, you can, on the right-hand side of Twitch, you know, you have, like, your, your picture on the right. You can click on that, and then down, there's a tab that says subscriptions. You can check your subscriptions if you want to know when, when yours will end. Uh... Yeah, I did stream MTGO beforehand. I've been streaming for a little over three years. Yeah. I've been streaming Arena exclusively for basically one year now. You know, at the end of October will be exactly a year. Yeah, I used to stream like modern almost exclusively on Arena. Oh, I'm sorry, on Magic Online. But Arena's a lot more fun to play. <laughs> no, Mulligan did not help very much. We need those lands. Yeah, we went from one land to two lands. We're trying. We're we're moving on up. Maybe next Mulligan we'll get three lands. As long as it plays too long. Up there the boys and now this body makes his favorite song. So Sabotage is a one for one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let them keep those. Um Murder's Rider, you know, is a is like a two for one. Being able to kill something and then be a, a two three creature that I gotta deal with. Yeah, like 
Rider trades with their borrower and a sabotage. Not bad. Hey, Freddy. Um, yeah, I, I like the mono black version more myself. Um, I, yeah, like you know, Rakdos has Mayhem Devil, and everything. I don't know. They're they're pretty close though. I just I just really like Citadel. I think Citadel can win you so many games. But of course, you can definitely play Citadel in. Rakdos also, but you don't you don't get to gain the life with a Yara. So they do not have sabotage available currently. Let's get a Yara, a Yara in play. Yeah, Fabled's for yeah, deck thinning and, and resetting the library with Citadel. You know, like if you can shuffle with Citadel. So I led with the Murderous Rider first to try to bait out a Counterspell. First, I know we don't get to trigger a Yara, but I was hoping they would think that I was just on the five mana and maybe they would counter. Don't really want a Yara to... Oh wait, they can't block with the Brazen Borrower anyway. Hmm. So maybe I should attack. My opponent didn't know my whole hand. I My opponent didn't know that I drew a land there and was going to be able to double spell. My opponent knew about uh, the rest. They didn't know about that my draw step was a land. Yeah, so I can sack the rider to draw a card. If I knew I was going to draw a land, I would sack the rider. If I knew this was a land on top. Drill bit sideboard. <clears throat> Sorry, I was getting choked up there. But I do not know that I'm going to draw a land. Not a land.
They did not even activate castle there. <clears throat> I feel like they have ritual of sight. Whoops, sorry. Sorry about that. I feel like they probably have ritual of sight. They kept some card on top a little bit ago whenever they scried with surveilled with what? Sabotage? They kept a card on top. So they definitely like something about their hand. Definitely, again, considered. Considered sacrificing it to draw two and get rid of the borrower. I'm basically just holding this a Yara back to be able to draw another card if they have removal. Jeez. All right, two zero. I can't see. Can we click here? Nope. All guys in the way. Okay, there we go. Click there. I can. Mono Brazen Borrower animation. All right, we're still in it. We're 2 0. <clears throat> we have officially gotten our money back, our entry fee back, and more. I guess if, if a, you count a pack as worth a thousand gold which is what it costs okay so we our entry fee was two thousand gold with two wins we win fifteen hundred gold back so down five hundred gold but also one pack which is a thousand hmm i should have led with fabled passage here withdrawing the witch's oven Maybe we just draw another land anyway, because I want to be able to play Oven Familiar back to back. Jax. Is that even that important, playing them both at the same turn? Mono red versus mono black. Traditionally, mono red has had the upper hand on mono black in aggro type matchups because mono red's removal is also burn spells that can kill the opponent, where mono black's removal only does damage to creatures. Or, you know, always only removes creatures but doesn't kill the opponent. So, yeah, that's just a traditional take. The Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven combo that we have here, though, is pretty nice for this matchup. We can keep Runaway Steamkin in check. Ideally, I'll draw a third land and be able to play a Yara first before Lazatep Reaver.
Yeah, they killed the cat, but I, I can keep on getting the cat back. I just act I just act something else and get the cat back. It's okay to play the cat with the oven tapped. Yeah, just act that thing now I'd still get the cat back. Take it, go to 11. Sure. We're gonna outrace that. Already down to nine. Uh, no, nah, I'm not blocking fervent champion or scorch bitter. I don't think I'm blocking those things. I don't really care. They do a little bit of damage to me. They're pretty dead. Just like uh I have seven by by next turn. Just on on the battlefield here, we have seven drain, and they're at nine. But yeah, that's not gonna do it. So I have I have the one in the air. So I think I only put them down to one here. I think Cause that's seven. Yeah, we played our first deck that we played against was like a Bant Oko deck. You know, you know, Krasis, Oko, all that kind of stuff. Hmm. Yeah, so I can Cauldron Familiar to drain for two. This thing attacks for one. I can only put them down to one this turn. We're going to have to kill them the next turn. We're back up to, you know, 19. I guess I could I guess I could just sacrifice a creature and see if we draw a one drop. Game two. <sighs> hmm. No, no real love for Dreadhorde Invasion with, with this deck. It's just so slow. Like, you know, you have to play it, then you have to wait another turn to be able to get something. I think it's it's kind of too slow with Priest and everything. Yeah, we would have lethal through a flame sweep also. Um, so, like, you know, do we need three Citadel against, like, the red deck? You know, maybe not. Um, I still kind of want Citadels, though. I'll play the three Legion's Ends, cut a Priest, cut a Midnight Reaper, and cut a Citadel. I 
I'm gonna play this other murderous rider instead of a reaper. That's <laughs> that's the plan, Cracker. Just just win. I don't think it's very likely that anything's going to get banned in Standard. I think that the only thing that is... I guess there's... I think, like, the, the most realistic card to get banned is Field of the Dead. I, again, I don't think it's likely. I'm just saying that if if you tell me that something is banned, you know, like, if, if you tell me something's banned, what is it? I, I guess Field of the Dead would be the most likely. Next most likely would probably be 3 mana Teferi. But again, I don't I don't think either of those would be banned, but those would be the most likelies. It is also possible that they go that route and ban something like a Boreal Grazer. Some common or uncommon. Yeah, that's I mean that's that's a very good question. Why why move up the banned and restricted announcement like this if there's gonna be nothing banned? It's a very good question. Um, so likely something will get something will get banned. Now that doesn't that doesn't have to mean that it's standard though. So maybe that's a different format. But it, it's likely that something's going to change. Oh, don't tell me they have shock also. <laughs> With every, everything else here. Uh, they have a shock also. I need I needed this priest. Oh, I should have sacked it to the oven. Whoops. Well, whatever. I was just frustrated. I needed that priest. And then of course now they have the extra mana with Steamkin. Okay, did not use extra mana with Steamkin. I mean, I, I should have made a, a food token, though. I'm playing... So, usually I would play Orzhov Enforcer here, where Orzhov Enforcer trades with Steamkin better. But with them showing Burn Spell, that they're going to be playing this next turn, I don't really want them to, like, just use Burn Spell on Enforcer, and then I don't have, like, a, a very good block. Like, we'll just play a couple of creatures that admittedly don't block as well, but... My plan, of course, was we play, you know, like, if pre if they didn't have that last burn spell, we get to play Reaver, sack both of these, draw an extra card, and then have three mana still. Like, you know, the Reaver was going to be free. They would have had to get rid of one of their champions. That would have been really nice. Is Jeskai Ascendancy starting to see a lot of play again in Modern? I hope so. I own a lot of Jeskai Ascendancies. I don't know how many. I mean, less than 20, but... I mean, I probably own, like... Probably somewhere between 10 and 20. Both regular and, like, 10 and 20 foils. So I hope so. I don't know exactly where they are. I'd have to find them. But that'd be cool. That is overkill. I feel like that's overkill. It's 
sweet. They're up to five bucks. Nice. Why am I not sacrificing creatures for this witch's cottage? I'm blaming you, Hawkeye. You're in the way. I, I forgot about my... Or my oven. My witch's oven over there. I forgot about my, my witch's oven over there. Hawkeye was in the way. All right, we did it. We finally have a food. That was a really good hand for our opponent. I guess I have to play Enforcer and crack food token to stay alive because of this thing giving the Fervent Champions 3-1. We really need to draw one of our Legion's End for these Fervent Champions. I mean, they're, they're down to just two Fervent Champions. So if we do top deck one of our three Legion's Ends, who knows, maybe? It would be nice to have one extra food token. That I should have. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. It was kind of my plan to just pay two life and kill this fervent champion and go down to one. But I guess I can't do that because of that thing. So I have to just chomp with Murderous Rider. Yeah, I'm going to do the early Sunday stream tomorrow. Hmm. Do I have to chomp with Rider? I guess I don't. Yeah, I kind of do. Yeah. Or well, I mean, I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to block because yeah, we'll we'll chomp with this. But I, I I was basically wondering, could I could I actually cast Swift End or not? That that's what I was. Sorry, that's I didn't say that correctly. But I was thinking, can I cast Swift End? Like, let's say if I if I don't play Murderous Rider, could I have they attack out? I go down to two with the Scourge Spitter. I block a Fervent Champion. I sack the Fervent Champion, gain three, and then pay two. So then I go up to four, pay two life, so back down to two kill the other fervent champion i didn't block but then no scourge spitter kills me with the castle so we could not do that so we had to play the murderous rider so i i am going to be you know, blocking with a 1-1, one, one, sacking it to gain 3. I hope my opponent attacks with Scorch Spitter. Darn.
I wish I had one more food token that I should have had if I would have sacked the one two earlier. That I also wish I would draw a Legion's End for those. But if wishes and nuts. All right, I'm glad my opponent used their sweet Torbran top deck there and not later. Because, yeah, I, I was taking lethal there. I don't think we necessarily need to ditch the Citadels against Red. I don't think we necessarily need to. I think the game's going to play pretty long with like a lot like their their cards trading with our cards and like Citadel can take over the game. They they just had a, a really awesome hand there of like you know if they don't have like that third or like that that burn spell to, um to use that last point, uh, that last mana, you know, because they just went one drop into Steamkin, into other one drop, and you know, like the two fervent champions that just work so well together, also, and then into Light Up the Stage, into uh, one mana Burn Spell to kill my priest. Like, it was just a awesome, awesome hand. The like the Light Up the Stage didn't even didn't help. Like that still had two extra cards for them to, you know, then the next turn was Steamkin extra mana. But I think how it normally works, like, like the game one, like, you know, we both have a bunch of creatures that kind of trade, or you know, I have I have more creatures, but they have they have more removal spells. We kind of trade a bunch, and a Citadel can help us pull ahead in the late game. We have a good amount of life gain between Witches Ovens, Making Foods, the Kitty Cat, Ayara. So they have Rimrock Knight to pump this thing up. Do I want to trade? Priest for Rimrock Knight pump. No. Not without Reaper in play. Should allow them to play the Bone Crusher Giant, though, now. Which can be a problem if they um a Yara. No trample with the giant. But it is a 4 3. I'd really like to draw a cat.
There goes that Bone Crusher Giant. Speaking of cats. Speaking of cats. What you doing? Frenzy's pretty good. This doesn't look great because of Frenzy. If we draw a cat, it'd be pretty good. At least we're canceling out these Bone Crusher Giants. Wow. That was a, just a perfect card for them to have. Uh, that's a perfect card. Let's them play Frenzy. And still have the, the knight there. That was perfect. And then hit a land. Bourbon champion. Yeah, that was just an absolute perfect turn. That was certainly one of the best things I could draw. I don't know if that's better than just drawing Legion's End and exiling the two Fervent Champions. <laughs> Alright, all the Bone Crusher Giants in the yard now. Okay, never mind. See, that's why I wanted Citadel. <laughs> it's kind of like my frenzy. I was just a little, a little slow. You know, we missed like a land drop or two. I think two. And so I was, it was a little slow, but that's that's why I kind of feel like this deck is is like you know if I get my Citadel, I can do crazy stuff. If they get there, um, their frenzy, they get to do crazy stuff. Yeah, they, they had a couple of 
just ridiculously good turns there. Well, there's going to be a lot of trading, and then we kind of end up with like, you know, one, two cards left, and they had their big effect. There's definitely, uh, definitely times I thought we were winning that. Um, basically both the games that we lost, game two and three. But then whenever we saw Frenzy, nope. All right, so we got our 20 gems. Well, obviously at that point, <laughs> whenever all of that had already happened, we couldn't do anything with Citadel. But it's it's if we could have had, you know, if we would have drawn a cat and, you know, been able to keep draining, you know, drain life every turn with the cat and everything. And, and you know, if we would have, would have had a little, you know, a couple more cheaper cards and been able to trade. Our hand was a little, you know, like our hand, obviously, we just had too many three drops. You know, like we drew, we drew Reaper, Rider, Rider, Ayara. That's our whole hand were three drops. We could only single spell. And that, that matchup, you got to be able to double spell. And so if we could have kept double spelling, hit some land drops, and then get to Citadel. But we uh, did not with just all the threes. Uh, Fable Passage was good. I liked them. I would certainly con continue to play four of them. I liked that card. Um, I liked how this this played out a lot better than, than the last time that we played this deck. I, I think the Fable Passage was a good upgrade there. I think the third Witch's Oven was really nice. We, we played two last time. And also getting the third Citadel in there, I like that. Um, I like how this deck played. And, you know, I put I put a 24th land in here over the fourth Orzhov Enforcer. I liked that also. I liked... Because I think this deck does need to hit the land drops. And so I like that we're, we went up with the land um, as well. But then also, since we went up a land, we put in the Fable Passages. I added in the drill bits in the sideboard since the last time we played. I, I thought the drill bits were good. So, yeah, I like where the deck's at. You know, mono red gets you. That's fine. Um, I could definitely see playing something, some other card for the mono red matchup in our sideboard. I don't know exactly what. We didn't do a, a very good job of drawing Legion's Ends and, you know, cat oven combo. We, we did a good job drawing ovens. Didn't do, you know, the game that we won, we had cat. Game we didn't win, we didn't have cat. Kind of makes sense, but <laughs> but there we go. Um, that's our deck. That's a Yara's Citadel. So pretty sweet deck here. Um, all right. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, I uh, hope you hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And of course, thanks for watching. Um, also, leave some comments. I always like seeing the comments over there and everything. I think that I think that I still had a little bit too many threes in the deck. I think I could have could have cut down the other Reapers after sideboard. I think that's 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 something that I could have done. Um, <clears throat> maybe play more. I don't I don't know if I brought in like the duresses or all the drill bits. I definitely did not bring in the drill bits at all. But I don't know if I brought in the duresses. I don't think I did. I think maybe I should have brought in duresses and not played Midnight Reapers. That's that's what that's my re regret was playing the two Reapers instead of the two duresses. That's that's what I I would change for like the sideboarding next time. I think I should cut all four. So basically cut the four Midnight Reapers, cut one Citadel. So cut those five and then bring in Duress, Legions, and bring in those five. And then like maybe take out one Priest for like the extra Rider. I do want the extra Rider because it can you know just be the two, three Lifelinker. And so maybe cut one one Priest for the extra Rider. But but I think <clears throat> I think just eight three drops is all I should play. I think I, I should have cut all the Midnight Reapers there. All right, so there we go. Uh, he had high hopes for a Yara Citadel. That's, I mean, still, you know, winning two out of three matches is really strong. And uh, and like we said, like that was a really close three games. And I think I, I sideboarded wrong, um, and that that cost me. You know, like we had too clunky of a hand there. With we just kept drawing three drops. It's unfortunate. That's what happens. Uh, no, I don't want to take a Citadel out of the deck. I think Citadel is like your combo card, and it's it's really, really, really powerful. So I know like you could play like Gruesome Menagerie. We we tried doing that before, but honestly, Citadel is just a lot better. You know, you, but yeah, you could play like a Cavalier of Night, 
Cavalier of Knight would make your mono red matchup a lot better. I could I could see playing a Cavalier of Knight in the sideboard. If you want to take out the third Noxious Grasp. Um, yeah, like the third Noxious Grasp. Instead of playing three Noxious Grasp, one Cavalier of Knight, two Noxious Grasp. I could definitely see doing that where Cavalier of Knight can help out the mono red matchup. And do we really need a third Noxious Grasp with having four Murderous Rider? You know, maybe not. Maybe that's too much removal for, for Planeswalkers. Maybe a Cavalier of Night could be better there over the third grasp in the sideboard. Okay. Uh, no, no more Citadel run. Uh, usually as I stop streaming at 10 p.m. Usually I stream from 3 to 10 Eastern. It's 11, 11. We, we are pretty late here. Tomorrow I'm going to be on early. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock. It's Sunday, the Sunday matinee stream. So 1 to 8 Eastern tomorrow. So if you're... So everybody watching, check check out the stream tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern, 1 to 8. All right, but again, sorry, that's that's it for Yara Citadel. Thanks for watching, especially everybody on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and leave those comments. I'll see you for the next video.